Hi everyone, I'm Rabab Zehra from TechX Media. We are at Forescode Technologies office in Dubai today. And I have with me right now Mr. Sam Ismail. He is Senior Director, Meta Region at Forescode Technologies. Welcome, Sam. How are you? Good morning, Rabab. Good to have you here. It's a pleasure. So, Sam, could you please tell us about the current um, situation of cybersecurity landscape in the Meta Region and what makes it different from other markets? Well, uh, this is actually a very good question. We're seeing really a I mean, an uptick in the in the cyber attacks, especially in the Middle East, uh, that are targeting critical infrastructures in specific. If we look at, um, I mean, in the Meta region, outside of the Middle East, if we look in Africa, there is also a massive uptick into the ransomware and phishing uh, that are targeting financial gains, obviously. But in the Middle East, really the major targets are really the critical infrastructures. And that brings about a major challenge, obviously, for, I mean, our customers in, in specific in the Middle East, uh, to many reasons. Uh, obviously, the, I mean, there is a geopolitical unrest in, in the region, uh, which uh, we're seeing really most of the, the actual attacks are really state-sponsored. There is a difference between state-sponsored or even hacktivism or or that are the, the uh, uh, ransomware attacks that are targeting financial benefits or for the financial gain. Uh, when we're talking about really targeting uh, critical infrastructures, uh, the, the main goal or objective out of those, tar I mean, those attacks is disruptive. Disruptive in, in the sense that it actually could disrupt transportation, energy sectors that uh, to exert political pressure or exert actual opinion or uh, so it's really more of a political in a way disruptive fashion uh, that is really what we're seeing with it and ot convergence accelerating what risks and challenges do you see organizations are facing today so before i answer that question i mean let's ask a key question why is that needed to begin with i mean obviously the it ot convergence is is required uh, for uh, to bring about uh, automation, uh, data intelligence, integration with IT systems that in the past were not needed, mm -hmm. similar to ERP systems, cloud, uh, cloud environments, infrastructures. Um, and with all of these requirements uh, that we are embarking on with the major projects in the Middle East, especially with smart cities, uh, with the automation or the uh, the improvements into the healthcare, uh, into the actual energy sectors, it brings about a challenge, obviously. OT systems in nature, they were designed for uptime and safety. Security was never in mind. Uh, and another challenge, the OT systems, I mean, that are currently in place today, whether they're in the oil and gas, in the energy, or in the manufacturing, they have been in operations for decades. So they're operating on a very old operating systems, very old applications that were not designed, that once were isolated, and they were never designed with security in mind. So, and also brings in another challenge. The OT systems are actually managed by teams. Uh, their sole, I mean, rightfully said, their sole purpose or their uh, sole uh, goals are uptime and safety. IT is actually looking at things in a different perspective. Uh, so when you bring in, there is a cultural clash on regarding what are the actual policies, security policies that need to be in place. The one important aspect also, another challenge is visibility. Uh, there is the actual shadow devices in the, in the OT environments. So uh, the, um, uh, the, the actual ITOT teams lack full visibility of all of these devices that actually are in support of the OT, OT infrastructure. So you put all of these challenges into a bucket, it uh, alongside all of these major initiatives, whether the major sporting events, the innovation into the smart cities, uh, into the energy sectors, into the health sectors, it, it, uh, it really compounds the actual challenge within the security teams as well. 
Sam, you just spoke about the policies that are shaping the cybersecurity landscape. So government policies are also shaping the cybersecurity priorities in the region. How are they influencing adoption and resilience? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, actual regulations or government regulations are the single source, the most important single source of accelerating adoption of cybersecurity in, uh, by far in our region. And uh, I must say, actually, uh, the leaders in that space in the Middle East are actually in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and, and the UAE. And uh, those regulations have started a few years ago, being as recommendations. But we're seeing more and more all of these regulations are becoming enforced. And this is really, I mean, good news for our customers uh, because it's really a starting point. And it's also a uh, really a very good initiative from perspective it really builds in adoption across the entire region not just within the mature markets that i've mentioned within in our uh, in the middle east uh, and uh, i must say regulations are i mean as they become enforced obviously adoption accelerates at the same speed but uh, in our opinion regulations are really a good starting point all of these that you have mentioned, obviously, they play a great role into a couple of things that we actually that could actually assist our customers in the areas of uh, threat identification, threat analysis, and threat mitigation. Because AI obviously operates at scale; it can uh, it can absorb massive amounts of data, whether it's from logs or from the, from device information uh, similar to device information that's provided by Forescout and uh, the other systems that are in place at our customers' environments. So it does really operate at scale. I mean, obviously, that humans cannot scale up to. Uh, it, uh, it provides the, uh, the machine learning ability within AI. It provides the, our customers the ability to identify risks before they happen. So really the, the entire goal is how customers are enabled with AI to actually identify risks early, to be able to actually mitigate that risk early that at a, at a level where humans cannot scale to. Uh, and obviously it, uh, it helps in the areas to minimize some of the workload on the IT staff or the security staff, which is obviously a major challenge in our region. Finding I Security resources is a major challenge, and AI does help from that perspective in eliminating some of the mandate. From your perspective, what are the biggest challenges facing CISOs in Meta region today, and how can they move beyond compliance to achieve real resilience? So, there are multiple challenges, obviously, our CISOs are faced with. One, bringing about the balance between geopolitical pressure and business continuity. This is one. Another one is talent shortage. In our region, we do have, I mean, it's, it's a known fact, we do have a shortage of uh, cybersecurity talent in, in, in our region. Another one is how to prioritize budgets. I mean, budgets is obviously is a major concern as well into uh, the, the budgets that are required uh, from an investment into the cybersecurity solutions to bring about a, a higher uh, cyber posture within their environments. Uh, you put all of these together, they're definitely faced with quite a few challenges on their hands. Uh, but our advice, I mean, has always been and continues to be. <clears throat> In order to actually build the, the proper uh, cybersecurity strategy and um, plan for the proper investments within the environment uh, to protect the environment. The number one priority should be on the comprehensive visibility of every single asset that is connected to the environment. To ensure that, I mean, uh, the CISOs and the supporting staff have a full understanding of the security posture of every single device. Uh, so, Sam, since we are talking all about cybersecurity today, re the, a recent incident that has happened and it has impacted multiple airports in Europe and it's been four days. Flights are not yet back to normal. Um, it is one of the biggest cyber, uh, cyber attacks in the recent times. Would you like to comment on that? Sure. And this is exactly what we have been talking about. 
uh, attacks are becoming very vicious. They're becoming targeting disruption that affects people's daily lives and also in some cases people's lives, right? People lives. Uh, so really the focus is going to be on how do we identify blind spots? We cannot afford today to leave any blind spot behind. We cannot afford to leave any device behind. We cannot, the zero trust is critical. You cannot trust any device. You cannot trust any, you cannot leave any anomaly undiscovered, unassessed. So looking ahead in the next three to five years, where do, do you see the biggest risks and biggest opportunities for organizations in this region? I think we've uh, beating or talked about risks a lot. So let's talk about opportunities mm -hmm. for a minute. Opportunities are actually in the AI, how AI, and we're seeing a lot an uptick in that space, how AI can actually help us innovate into the areas of threat identification early, threat mitigation quickly, automation in that space. So you, we're gonna see, I mean, we're anticipating to actually see a lot of innovation and we're actually innovating at, at Forescout in that space as well to help our customers bring in information early that will help them really decide and protect their environments rather to become more uh, proactive rather than reactive. And AI is gonna bring in a lot, a lot to the table from that perspective from an automation and speed because speed it, it, today's uh, cyber uh, I would say security space is all about speed that's great yeah. and it was amazing talking to you uh, we had some wonderful insights from you thank you so much for it's being here with us. thank you so much thank you